So we are going to start our morning session. And I congratulate for those all who are present because after this fantastic banquet, it's not easy. <laughs> so we are going to start our session with Dr. Albrecht, Dr. Johannes Albrecht on rare decays in quark flavor physics. Good morning, everyone. Good that uh, at least some of you found the way here at 8.30. So I'm going to talk about uh, the search for um, new physics in rare uh, quark flavor decays. And uh, if you put that into context, there's uh, two orthogonal ways to search for new physics. You can search for new physics via the uh, decays of new heavy particles. It's called what we call direct searches, and uh, that's what we call the uh, high energy frontier. And then you can search for new physics uh, via the effect of that new physics in um, loop processes. So these uh, heavy new particles occur as virtual particles. And this is what we call the precision frontier. And I really want to stress that both of these uh, approaches are very uh, important and are orthogonal to each other and complement each other. And in my talk, I will discuss uh, rare heavy quark decays, where I interpret heavy quark decays mostly as beauty decays. And uh, Tom Browder will discuss uh, CP violation measurements. I will give also a slight introduction to, to the experiments, or a very brief introduction. And Tom will give, a, will give a brief outlook of the next generation of experiments coming. And after us, uh, Gino will discuss the interpretation of these measurements in terms of new physics models. So how do, how do we search for new physics more precisely? Well, the, um, the main field of interest we are using, we are, we, or the main kind of decays we are using is flavor-changing neutral currents. So in the standard model, this is these kind of diagrams. And you have B quarks decaying with a mass scale of 5 GeV. And on that mass scale, the dominant particles in the loop processes are W, Z, and tops. So you're in the standard model, the uh, dominant masses, or the dominant uh, virtual particles occur at masses of 100 to 200 GeV. And then there could also be many other particles in loop processes, like supersymmetric particles or uh, additional Higgs bosons, Z primes. And all these particles occur, or all these particles we expect to be at higher masses. And if we look at the amplitudes, the, um, we write the amplitude as a standard model part with the couplings of the standard model, which occur at a mass scale of about 100 GeV, and uh, then a new physics mass scale, which is unknown, unknown scapula, couplings and unknown mass scales. And the, the main advantage of rare um, quark decays is that the standard model contribution is very small. So that contribution is very small. So if you see any deviations here, it's relatively large. In, um, the, ma the main field in, um, in heavy quark physics is, or in, in these rare decays, is uh, B to SLL transitions. So that's a flavor changing new to current transition. And to understand how we um, can use that best, it's best to uh, write the Hamiltonian as an effective Hamiltonian. And what you do then is you expand this Hamiltonian in local operators with corresponding Wilson coefficients depending on the type of interaction. And by doing so, we uh, can actually test if the couplings that we have are the standard model couplings or are non-standard couplings. And uh, so we, for each operator, we uh, calculate the Wilson coefficients, and then we measure a process and we compare the measurement with the, um, the calculation. Experimentally, there is uh, three big fields I want to discuss here. So the first one is the uh, search for very rare decays, uh, B and BS into two muons. And with these decays, you're mostly um, sensitive to scalar and pseudoscalar interactions, also electric penguins. So each of these operators has a number, and depending on which number is, you, you have a different operator. So this is scalar and pseudoscalar which uh, are heavily suppressed in the standard model. So if you see anything there, this is a very interesting probe. The second last uh, large uh, part is B2S mu-mu transitions, where this is a quark level transition, and then you add a spectator quark, and depending on the spectator quark, you get a large variety of states. And here you're mostly sensitive to the um, photon penguin and the electric penguins. And the last part is radiative um, penguin diagrams where you're sensitive to the photon, penguin, and especially also to the right-handed part. So before I start with uh, discussing 
these blocks of measurements, let me briefly introduce uh, the players. So um, there is a, there's a few different centers where flavor physics uh, happens in the world. At the moment, CERN is clearly the dominant player. Um, there is a lot of flavor physics being done at the Tevatron, and of course in the last decade, at, and, and the large decade, last decade in uh, Barbar, at the Barbar and Bell flavor factories, and also at best three at the Charm threshold in China. So quark flavor at the LHC, the, the LHC is dominating uh, the flavor physics at the moment because the, at proton collisions at uh, seven or eight TV, or soon 13, the um, production cross-section is huge. So for, I give you the beauty production cross-section of 75 microbahn, but charm is, um, is even larger and also tau. And both Atlas CMS and LHCB have uh, very extensive flavor programs. Atlas and CMS mostly rely on, on the good trigger and PID for hard muons, don't have uh, hadron PID and collect a data sets of, uh, total data set of about 30 inverse femtobahn. LHCB is a dedicated flavor experiment. Uh, with a very, very flexible trigger that really um, puts LHCB there on the map and also the, well, muon ID is, is good as Atlas and CMS, but also there's a, there's a very, um, very good hadron PID with two Cherenkov detectors making uh, a much wider range of measurements possible. The total data set LHCB runs at a, at a lower instantaneous luminosity. The total data set of LHCB is uh, about three inverse femtobahn. In the last decade, uh, flavor physics was dominated by the B factories, Baba and Bell. Both are um, experiments located at asymmetric E plus E minus colliders, which uh, collided the electrons at the Y4S resonance, which then decay into BB bar pairs. Um, ran very successfully for the, for the last decade and collected a very, very huge uh, data set. And although the, the data taking is finished for some years now for um, Barbara and Bell. There's still very interesting um, results coming out, and I will show you some. So let's start uh, with the measurements. Let's start with the search for BS and B0 to mu mu. Um, this is a very interesting channel because it's very rare in the standard model, so it's predicted to occur at 3.6 times 10 to the minus 9, so at the branching fraction of 3.6 times uh, 10 to the minus 9. And that's so rare because it's a flavor changing new to current but on top of that suppression from the flavor changing into current, it's also uh, helicity suppressed, which gives another factor of 10 to the minus four. And that actually makes it very interesting because in many, in many extensions of the standard model, you, um, you predict to have new scalar particles beside that uh, vector particle. If you, if you have new scalar particles like uh, additional Higgs bosons, for example, that helicity suppression gets lifted and you get a, a large enhancement in the branching ratio predicted. So for example, in the minimal supersymmetric model, this is predicted to be proportional to the sixth power of tangent beta. So that can, in principle, or could have gone um, very high. Now measuring these decays can strongly constrain the supersymmetric parameter space. Um, in earlier days, it was said to be a discovery mode, but um, the, well, I will show you the results for BS2 mu. And um, even though the, uh, show you the measurement for BS to mu, which you will have seen, the ratio of uh, the BS to the B0 branch infractions remains a very powerful and stringent test of uh, new physics, and in, uh, specifically for the hypothesis of minimal flavor violation. So how, how is the search for decay with a branch infraction of 10 to the minus 9 being done? I'll show you an example of the LHCB search strategy, but the uh, CMS search strategy is actually very, very similar. So what is done, the uh, Bs get produced in the primary vertex and then fly for a certain distance. In uh, the LHCB experiment, this distance is typically one centimeter and then decay into two muons. And what you do is you use all the information you have from the separated vertex, vertex quality, kinematics, and combine that in one multivariate classifier. So that's a BDT in that case. And that BDT is, um, is designed such that the um, BDT output, which is shown here, is a flat function for the signal, for the black points, and is a very steeply falling function for the background. And then you bin your data in this BDT and fit the invariant mass in different bins of that BDT. And I'll show you here as an example the lowest bins of the BDT. So this one, this plot here corresponds to this bin, which is clearly dominated by background. There's thousands of background events here and no signal at all. And if you go all the way down to the highest, to the most sensitive bins, there's almost no background anymore but a very clearly visible signal peak. And then you fit this branch, oops, 
you fit this branching fraction, and then interpret this branching fraction relative to a control mode, and that control mode is in the CMS case, uh, B plus to JSIK, and in the LSUB case, both uh, J plus and J uh, B plus and JSIK and B2K pi. So then, um, coming to the results, in uh, November 2012, LSUB found the first um, evidence for, for the decay BSTB using two femtobahn. Since then, uh, the experiment has updated to the, full, uh, the, the analysis to the full data set, the three femtobahn, and uh, with that data set, got an expected sensitivity of five sigma, measured 4.0. Um, CMS has also updated their um, analysis um, to the full data set and get an expected sensitivity of 4.8 sigma, so almost exactly the same. C, 4.3, so that's also the same. Both experiments see a branching fraction of uh, 2.9 or 3.0 times 10 to minus 9. Compare that to the expectation of 3.6, it's in a very good agreement with uh, the standard model prediction. Both experiments also um, see some uh, B0 to mu mu, so that, that peak here is the BS to mu mu peak, the red one in that case. And both experiments also see some B0 to mu mu peak, but with the limited significance of two sigma each, and uh, with a slightly higher branching ratio than expected. So these, these results are combined in a preliminary combination on the result level, and this combination gives a um, branch infection for BS to mu mu of 2.9, plus or minus 0.7, times 10 to minus 9, very good agreement with the standard model. B0 to mu mu, the combination is, is about a factor 3.5 above the standard model. The significance with this uh, preliminary combination cannot really be precisely be determined. It's on the edge of 3 sigma, I would say. Um, and we need to wait for a full combination of the likelihoods to really say a, um, a real statement about the significance of B0 to mu mu, um, which will come later this year. So that is um, the uh, discussion of rare decays of bs 2 Let me come to the second part of the measurements, electric penguin decays, B2S, LL transitions. And, and the first thing I really want to mention here, which is really a nice thing on that field, is that uh, all three LHC experiments see very large signals. And this is an example of the B0 to K star mu mu, which is the golden mode. And you see that all three experiments see large signals here. This is, um, you also see the... Uh, mass resolution and purity of the different experiments compared. So um, B2S mu mu or B2S LL transitions generally allow a very uh, detailed and uh, precise test of the structure of the interaction. And depending on what you add to this quark level transition, you get a large variety of uh, different decay modes. And these different decay modes have been measured by uh, basically all experiments doing flavor or doing beauty physics in the, in the last uh, years or decade. Um, the data sets we have range between, between a few events, 100 events, 200 events, to, uh, to data sets of 1,000, 2,000, and in the largest case, 5,000 events that you have available for, for analysis here. So what do you do with these, uh, with these uh, events then? Well, you uh, analyze them in a, um, you use these events to, to analyze the structure of the interaction. And the decay B, B0 to K star mu mu is a particularly interesting mode because it's a pseudo scalar decaying into two vector particles. And that opens a very rich uh, phenomenology. And that rich phenomenology is described in, in an angular distribution. So you define, I don't really want to discuss the definition of the angles in details, but you define certain angles of the, of the decay product particles, and then you, you expand your decay rate in these angles and in Q squared. Q squared is the Daimyon invariant mass. And you get an, an angular expression that depends on these 11 terms here. And that, um, that angular distribution is very precisely predicted by the standard model. So what you do now is you try to measure these, this distribution and by comparing the standard model prediction to what you see, you have, uh, in principle, in each of these terms, a very powerful tool at hand to separate the standard model from, from, from new physics. Now, this uh, expression here with 11 terms is a little bit complicated. And the data sets with a few hundred events, which you then bin in several bins in Q squared, is not, are not really um, very large. So what you do is you simplify these event, uh, the, this distribution. 
there's two different ways to simplify this distribution. The LSUB collaboration um, simplifies this by an angular folding. So phi is transformed in phi plus phi, pi. And by doing that, four out of these 11 terms drop out and you get a much simpler angular distribution that you then can fit to your data. The Atlas and CMS collaboration do uh, something slightly different, but in principle the same. They integrate straight out two out of the three angles and also reduce the expression to four free parameters that, um, that they have. So now um, the results on this uh, simplified analysis um, from Atlas, CMS, and LSUB collaboration. You see here different, uh, the different terms. So this is the most famous one, the forward-backward asymmetry with the um, standard model prediction as bin theory in the, in the um, violet bands. And also there's also an unbin uh, theory prediction. Then you see the data points of all, um, of all the experiments um, given here. And uh, the uh, measurements agree very well with the standard model prediction for, uh, for, all, for all four terms. Um, so this you can use to um, then constrain potential, or that to then constrain um, new physics models. Um, the LSUB collaboration has not only done this angular folding, but has also done a different angular folding to access the other four observables. And at the same time, um, when doing this, uh, this other um, angular folding, the variables or the, the observables are a little bit uh, changed um, to a bit more, a bit more complex of the observables, but also these complex of observables are designed in a way that form factor uncertainties cancel out at, at leading order. So this, this makes the theory input cleaner and then makes it easier to uh, discover potential um, disturbances. And uh, the LCB collaboration has measured four different uh, of these observables and in general the agreement is very good, but there's one observable called P5 prime where an anomaly is, is observed here, so this uh, measurement has, shows a, quite a large disagreement with the theory prediction. It's a local discrepancy of 3.7 sigma, which has caused uh, quite some, some interest. So let me spend one slide uh, discussing, discussing the, this. So this, uh, this discrepancy here is, um, can be interpreted, or one can try to to understand if this, if this discrepancy can be interpreted as, as, uh, as a new physics signal. And if it would be, you would want to compare it to different electric penguin modes and you would want to see a consistent pattern there. So um, what is done is a, is a um, global fit to all electric penguin data. And um, there, depending on the analysis, there's a number of different analyses. Uh, the global tension is between two and four sigma, depending on uh, exact inputs and treatment of form factor uncertainties. I want to very briefly give you a, uh, give you a glimpse on, on uh, my summary of the views from the theory com community. And I think uh, Gina will discuss in, in two talks later in a bit more detail um, what, uh, what this can be interpreted. So the first obvious question is, do you really understand our, our theory error bars or could the theory error bars uh, underestimate it? And in the process of understanding that, um, the, uh, I would say we have made some progress in understanding the QCD contributions and in particular the predictions of these, um, of these points. If you want to be a bit more optimistic, you, you could interpret this tension as a signal of, uh, of new physics and you could inter or uh, the, the global fits are consistent with the change in Wilson coefficients. So what you could do is you could add to the electric penguin <coughs> Uh, coefficient C9, you could add a new physics contribution. And if you do that, you actually see a, an improved agreement between the data points. So, oops. so what you see is the data points compared to the standard model prediction. This is E0 to K star mu mu. And then you, you modify the Wilson coefficient by some new physics contribution, then you get a better agreement of the prediction with um, the data. And then you bring that to other modes. So for example, this is BS to phi mu mu. And you also see that Doing this contribution, which is, is determined from case time mu, you also get a better agreement in fine mu, which is uh, very interesting. Um, it could be consistent with the 7 TV Z prime signal, but as I said, it could also be uh, that we want to work on our understanding of QCD. So what, what you then want to do as next thing is you want to check this, uh, 
what you would see of, if you had such a signal in more channels. So if you had a, if you had a 7 TV Z prime signal, you would expect a suppression of other B2K and K star mu transitions. So the LHCB collaboration has measured uh, these B2K and K star mu transitions in four different final states, so as K plus, K short, K star plus, and K star zero. And experimentally, the modes with the, with the K short in the final state are a bit more challenging because the K short flies a very long distance and a significant part of these K shorts decay outside of the ve vertex detector. Um, large signals are observed in all four modes. If you see the branching fraction, so this is the relative branching fraction as a function of Q squared for uh, K star mu mu, K mu mu, K star zero, and K star plus mu mu. You see an overall trend that, that the experimental data for all of these measurements lies below the, the standard model prediction. So this could be a tantalizing hint. Um, however, before we get too excited, um, the standard model predictions are currently being reviewed and it seems like the predictions for the Scala modes uh, will go down by 10%. So then uh, this discrepancy gets uh, reduced. Having all these modes at hand, you can also do isospin asymmetries between these modes, and these isospin asymmetries, uh, which are discussed in the parallel sessions, are found in very good agreement um, with the predictions. Not only uh, the LHG experiments have measured these uh, transitions, but also um, the B factories. And I want to show you here a uh, semi-inclusive analysis from the Barbar collaboration from uh, to B to XS LL, where um, the Barbar and Bell collaborations can uh, or do also measure these leptons as electrons. So they, they measure this uh, semi-inclusive decays as the sum of 20 exclusive modes, which are given here, having both muons and electrons in the final state. And then two measurements are being done here. One is the partial branching factor and CP asymmetry, which is found to be consistent with the standard model, or the, the CP asymmetry is found to be consistent with the standard model. And uh, the branching fraction, again, you would uh, you would expect the same suppression as, as I said before. Um, this is done in two bins of Q squared. The lower bin of Q squared is in very good agreement with the standard model prediction. The higher bin of Q squared is uh, within one sigma, um, but above. Um, the last electric penguin measurement I want to show you is a test of lepton universality being done by uh, the LHDB collaboration. So um, what is done there is the um, ratio of branching fractions of B to K mu mu over B to K E E decays is, uh, is tested, and these are uh, flavor changing neutral current loop decays. Um, so in principle, if you have, for example, charged, charged Higgs particles, you would expect a, uh, a difference in this ratio from uh, the standard model prediction. The standard model prediction of this ratio is one with a very good uncertainty, so with a, with a correction of smaller than uh, 10 to the minus three coming from phase space differences. Between, between these modes. Experimentally, uh, measuring the electrons is a little bit challenging because the ele electrons emit uh, Bremsstrahlung. And uh, you see that the, uh, you see here the mass peak of a B to J psi, or the J psi goes to two electrons in the K ion, and you see this mass peak is much wider than the mass peaks uh, we normally see from the LHCB collaboration with muons in the final state. Um, the non-resonant mode of the B to K EE is shown here where a clear signal is seen, but um, you also see the, the tail from the Bremsstrahlung. So then the, um, the, uh, the ratio is being measured as a double ratio to uh, B to, to the resonant modes, and the LHCB collaboration sees uh, a uh, ratio between the electron and muon modes to be 0.745. Um, shown here in the plot, the black measurement, the LH LHCB measurement, which is uh, the most precise measurement there. Compare that to the Barbar measurement, which is actually spot on the same central value in a similar bin of Q squared, and uh, the Bell measurement in a much, uh, well, in, the, in the whole Q squared region lies uh, just on the standard model. So this measurement is uh, consistent with the standard model at a level of 2.6 sigma. So we will need a bit more uh, data to understand if this is a, a statistical fluctuation or a hint of lepton non-universality. Let me come to the last big part of my talk, um, radiative transitions, and in particular, photon polarization measurements. So B to S uh, gamma decays <coughs> have actually been the uh, first electric penguin decays ever measured 
by the Clio collaboration uh, a good 20 years ago. And in as general overview, one can say that the inclusive and exclusive B2S gamma measurements are found to be consistent or compatible with the standard model. Um, this is what uh, the legacy from the B factories. But the photon polarization is yet untested. And the photon polarization is very interesting because the standard model predicts here uh, left-handed photons. That's because the, the right-handed coupling is uh, suppressed by um, a significant factor. And this uh, left-handed photons you can test and you want to test. And there's different ways to test that. And I want to show you a, uh, a test using a higher resonant case, the RD case. But before doing that, let me briefly discuss the um, inclusive measurements from the branching fraction and CP symmetry. The Barbar collaboration has measured the, um, again, in a semi-inclusive uh, way, so this time with 38 uh, final state. Final state has measured there the um, isospin difference of the CP symmetries. So this is the difference of the CP symmetries in the B plus modes to the CP symmetries in the B zero modes. And the interesting thing here is that this difference in CP symmetry is proportional to the imaginary part of C8. And uh, C8 is the gluonic penguin, uh, the gluonic Wilson coefficient, gluonic penguin Wilson coefficient, and this has not been constrained experimentally yet. So the measurement um, from the Barbar collaboration is consistent with the standard model prediction. You predict uh, no CP asymmetry, and you see within the uncertainties no asymmetry. So you can use that to put the first constraints on C8, and uh, these are the first experimental constraints ever done on C8. So let me very quickly um, show you the um, Bell measurements of the semi-exclusive B2 XS gamma um, decays also as a semi-inclusive analysis of 38 final states, and the branching fraction here is uh, measured to be 3.74 in nice agreement with the standard model. There's also an analysis of the CP asymmetry, which is uh, found to be consistent with the standard model prediction of uh, of zero. So the last radiative analysis before I uh, get chased out of, out of stage, I want to show to you is uh, the uh, recent LHB analysis of uh, B2K pi pi gamma. And uh, this analysis uses the asymmetry of the photon direction um, to measure the, uh, the photon polarization. And the, me the measurement principle is actually uh, just analogous to, to the famous Wu experiment. Um, as you see, is a very nice large signal there of 13,000 uh, candidates in three femtobahn. This is the, the uh, signal mass peak. And uh, then the, um, the data is binned in uh, K pi pi, and the K pi pi mass, so this is where, the, where you expect the resonant K star um, to be, or the higher resonant K star to be. But you see, actually, there's, a, there's a quite a complicated overlapping structure of different resonances. And uh, the analysis does not try to disentangle these different analyses, but uh, bins the data in different bins. Um, and overall, the, uh, the photon is found to be um, polarized at 5.2 sigma, which is the first observation of uh, photon polarization in B2S gamma decays. So I uh, get already signaled that my time is more than over, so I cannot discuss uh, the uh, strange charm, and top decays only want to very briefly mention interesting results from NA62 and 48, and also a wide overview of uh, flame virtue and neutral charm decays. Top decays have already been, um, been discussed in the uh, top plenary. So that brings me to, to my summary. Um, I hope I could show you that rare quark decays play a very important role in the search for new physics. There's no striking hints for, for uh, the standard model to break down yet, but there is a few interesting uh, tangents that start to emerge. So to name them, there's this uh, P5 prime tangent in B2K star mu mu. There's a lepton universality, which uh, agrees at the 2.6 sigma level only. And in all these tangents, the uh, more data, and in many cases also further theoretical developments, will, uh, clarify, will clarify. And the good thing is we have this data at hand, so we wait um, for updates, um, which are expected this year from uh, B02K star mu mu, from all three LHC collaborations, the um, BS2 mu mu, proper combination of likelihoods of LHCB and CMS is also um, due this year. So my personal summary is we have a 
we have found a, a bunch of interesting shiny stones, but we still have to find out if this is real gold or some glimmer. Thank you. We have time for a few questions. <clears throat> so my question is about this hint for a, car, uh, a little bit of enhancement in B sub D to mu mu from both uh, CMS and uh, LHCB. So what luminosity is needed to try to clarify that? So I can rephrase it like what's luminosity needed to have, let's say, three sigma sensitivity to the standard model rate in this decay? Um. So both collaborations see a significance of two sigma. The um, expectations of the experiments, actually of both experiments more or less, are to see a standard model B0 to mu mu at three sigma by the end of run two, so roughly at 2018. The data that we have here with this enhancement that we see here is really at the edge of three sigma. So this, uh, the proper combination of likelihoods which is uh, heavily being worked on, will show if that is three sigma or not. But this is, this is a, an evidence of B0 to mu mu with or with not three sigma to be different from zero. There's not the dis disagreement or agreement with the standard model prediction. I don't, I don't see any other question. If not, I, we should thank the uh, Albert again.